Congratulations on this, another fantastic performance. And I want to ask you, I mean, you, you know, you know about this story, but the way that Ben presented it, we're all at the edge of our seats. We know what's going to happen. What is it about working with that, that guy? He's, he just did such a tremendous job directing this movie. When I first heard that Affleck was uh, directing this, I thought it was that duck from that insurance commercial. So I didn't expect much. Um, but he is, uh, he's not the duck, I found out. And uh, he's, he's just so bright. But he's also personable. He makes you feel comfortable so that you can take chances or offer suggestions. Anybody who, who is too domineering, um, then it puts people that are like, well, I, think, I had an idea, but I'm not going to say it because I, I, you know. But he opens it up and allows you to feel that you can approach, and we do, and, and you feel more relaxed and, and, and more capable of performing at the top of your game. Yeah, and of course, you know, you spend most of your scenes with him in this film, so you're not just working with him as, you know, as his, your director. He's your co-star. So to watch him go from, you know, one thing to another, what's it like, you know? It's an unusual thing where there's like a, you can't completely turn the switch off. I've directed myself in, in film and television as well, and it's, it's, it, it's a, a, a little um, psychotic, actually, when you're, you're, and you're, you, you, you feel a sense of schizophrenia, you know, and so you're acting, you're focused on that, and then that's a cut, and then you start immediately start going into, okay, did we get that? That was good. And was, you know, what else do I need to? Do? And so you're really by the end of the day, you're exhausted. Yeah, yeah I remember. But you're that. also wired. Yeah, and well, it's the adrenaline thing. I think. It's adrenaline, and you're wired, and and uh, and it's you see the the end zone, and it's a ways away, and you just got to keep going. Um, it's important to eat well and wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> Those, that's the main thing, comfortable shoes. Yeah. No high heels for you, Brian Cranston. He, and he tried to wear high heels <laughs> a few times, and I said, Ben, you really should go flats. Absolutely. Get out of Jennifer's closet. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um, you were playing a CIA guy, and I, you know, I'm watching this movie, and I know about CIA, but I go, what a life, really. Like, covert operations, leaving your family. I mean, it's really, you got to devote yourself to this 100%. Did you kind of study up on CIA before you took on the, the, the role? I did. I went to Langley, Virginia, and I met with several of the CIA officers uh, of varying degrees of age. And what I found is that it's very common for the CIA uh, officers to marry within the CIA. Mm -hmm. And I asked why, and they said, I guess it's just easier. And I realized that's true. If you, came, if you were with the CIA and you came home to me and I said, honey, what'd you do for today? And it's like, I, you know, I can't, we can't talk about that. Yeah. But if we were both CIA, I know not to ask. You know not to ask. We just keep that separate. So I met a guy who is married to a CIA officer and their daughter is now a CIA officer. Yeah. It's the family business. Mm -hmm. And there's something incestuous about that, but it's also something that they, they alone have to embrace and understand about each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's very secretive. Pretty yeah. amazing life. Pretty amazing life. Yeah, I got to meet Tony in Toronto, and that was pretty special. Yeah. And yeah. his wife, Jonna, is a, is a CIA officer as well. Yeah, was. Was, yeah. Um, how do you make things look so effortless, Brian? Everything you do, it looks like, no problem. Really? Mm. That's, the, that's the magic of it. It's, it's hopefully made to look effortless, effortless but it's not. It's, it takes a lot of takes a lot of thought and, and work and experience and um, focus. Yeah, well, you do well. You do it well, that's Thank for you. sure. This film, of course, premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival, and being a Canadian, I was like, yay, it's such a good, you know, it's a perfect movie for the festival. Thank well, you, Canada. But what was it like to sit in that audience on that premiere night and have a lot of those Canadians sitting there watching this movie? It was very special. Ironically, the night that we premiered at the Toronto Film Festival was the very same day that Canada ordered a closure of their embassy in Iran and the closure of the Iranian embassy in Canada, in Ottawa. Um, it's remarkable that things change and they stay the same. Yeah. So the tensions are still there. It, it helps to illustrate that, the, that the, the story, the sensibilities are still fresh and are still alive. We're still dealing with this, with this condition. And um, 
But I think that the message of Argo is what is possible. That this bizarre story, this far-fetched idea worked. That six people, forget that they're Americans right now, six people were saved, their lives were saved because of the cooperation of two countries, of the element of the CIA, you know, the big clandestine operation, and Hollywood. Mm -hmm doing it for the greater good, not for any personal recognition, not for any financial gain, but because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. And that's Argo. Yeah, and, and just showing the, the great you know, relationship between Canada and the US too. Yeah. Pretty good. It's really good. We're buddies. Look at that. We don't want to fight anymore. <laughs> no, we do not. Um, you know what? All your TV fans are, are probably already going into mourning that this is the last season of Breaking Bad, I know, myself included. And, and what's it going to be like not to have Walt in your life? Uh, empty, in a sense. Um, I love that character. It is the role of my life. I know that I will never have a role greater than Walter White. Yeah. And I'm okay with that because I had it. You know, so there won't be any regret. It'll be, I'll look back at it, on it fondly. And that's why I, you know, I, my focus is on the here and now. I want to be in this moment at this time and uh, with, a, with a, an eye in the future, very little in the past. Are you going to do more directing? Because yeah. you, I know you're directing some of the Breaking Bad episodes Yeah, I'll direct well. another episode of Breaking Bad before all is said and done. And uh, I hope to direct a script that I wrote, um, a film script that I wrote next year. Oh, that'll be looking forward to that. And coming out, I think next you have a film called Get a Job with Anna Kendrick. And yeah. can you just tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, it's actually an interesting uh, dichotomy between father and son finding themselves unemployed at the same time. Mm -hmm. And as traumatic as it is for my recently graduated son, played by Miles Teller, it's even more traumatic for a 50-year-old man who loses his job and the desperation that could set in. What do we do now? because you can't take an entry-level position you it's you know so and that's all couched in comedy it's a comedy well i look forward to that it's and fun. i uh, always love talking to you you're such a great talent and thank you best of luck with all this because it's such an amazing film really thank really you good. so much great for job. Saying that. always great talking to you thank, thank you, you.